Hi, welcome to Magpie YouTube channel. I'm Anthony Tran, Magpie Invest Strategist. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the weakness in the Japanese yen and what it means for the Japanese economy. And finally, where the yen is heading. Well, the yen tumbled to a 24-year low against the dollar this week. A level not in the past few months, the yen has been hitting record lows against the US dollar, moving past the 146 level. This is mainly because yields on US Treasuries have climbed, as investors bet the Fed will continue raising interest rates aggressively. On the other hand, the Bank of Japan, BOJ, is keeping a 0.25% cap on the Japanese 10-year government bond yield. Japan's ongoing trade deficit is another factor reinforcing a weaker yen. The effect of these factors can be seen in the 22% depreciation in the yen against the dollar in the first 10 months of this year and the resulting 66% rally in the ProShares Ultra Short Yen ETF, which is an ETF designed to seek profits from a weaker yen against the US dollar. Generally speaking, a weaker yen helps large Japanese companies that have global business presence because it boosts the value of repatriated overseas profits. A weaker yen also increases the competitiveness of Japanese exports and help tourism by boosting the buying power of travelers from abroad. The positive effects of a weaker yen were evident in the 1950s, when the devastated Japanese economy rose quickly from the ashes of World War II. In 1945, when Japan surrendered to the Allies, the GDP per capita was only 2,771 US dollars, a mere 19% of the US for the same year. By 1973, Japan's GDP per capita has risen to 95% of the UK's and 69% of the US. This rapid economic growth was largely driven by the American-led political and economic reforms in Japan, under which the US dollar was fixed at 360 yen, a low level designed to help revive the Japanese economy. Back in the 1950s, Japan had a very young and productive population. This, coupled with the weak yen and the impact of the aforementioned reforms, was the key driver behind the country's economic miracle. However, as Japan developed, its fatality rate dropped significantly, thus severely undermining the workforce of Japan. It never rings, but it pours. After the global financial crisis of 2008 and 9 and the 2011 Fukushima disaster, many Japanese youngsters began feeling dejected and stopped spending money. In the days that follow, many Japanese youngsters have chosen to withdraw from society and from active living. Amid a shrinking workforce, even the weaker yen couldn't do much to revive the ailing economy. Another factor that hinders Japan from benefiting from a weaker yen is the shifting of its manufacturing operations. Since the 1980s, Japan has been moving many factories overseas to meet existing or growing local demand. In the late 1980s, less than 5% of Japanese companies made their products overseas. This percentage has been rising steadily since then. And by 2021, more than 20% of Japanese products were no longer made in Japan. The result of this shift is that Japanese companies need to pay for the overseas operations in US dollars or other foreign currencies, and therefore attenuating the overall positive impact of a weaker yen. Another reason that offsets the benefits of a weaker yen is Japan's very low level of energy self-sufficiency. Given that most energy commodity imports are denominated in US dollars, rising energy prices this year have been hurting the earnings of Japanese manufacturers, especially those with operations in the US and Europe. For example, in the first half of 2022, Toyota's operating income fell significantly in North America and Europe because of higher raw material prices and the fact that the operational expenses are paid in dollars and euros. In brief, we expect the yen to remain weak in 2022. Whether the yen can turn around is largely up to how high interest rates in the US will go and whether the BOJ will maintain its cap on domestic bond yields. Unfortunately, as the Fed will continue increasing interest rates to fight inflation, 
while the BOJ is still predicting that inflation will fall below 2% in 2023. And so it's continuing to stand by its ultra-low interest rates policy. Therefore, any rebound in the yen would only be short-lived, which offer opportunities for the bears to profit. Thank you for watching. See you next time.